we believe that this message will be a blessing to you so I want you to stay glued and watch to the end and share to bless others this is Christocentric we have a lot of Apostle Eric Nyamiche's message on our platform kindly check them out thank you for watching stay blessed this way is designed for us to enjoy good life it wises us up so that we'll be able to deal effectively with the affairs of life the understanding that the holy spirit gives brings wisdom it continually gives us the mind of christ and we said this is a superior mind great reward great reward great reward comes to those who obey the word of god it builds us holistically it gives us inheritance through the wisdom it provides and we say wisdom is the foundation upon which things are built wisdom is a spirit which we use to govern and lead well wisdom is power it turns things around for the better and we spoke about rewards of wisdom blessed are those who find wisdom and those who gain understanding understanding from the word of god now i commit you to god and to the word of his grace he can build you up and give you inheritance among all those who are sanctified we said that it builds us up body soul and spirit and we are saying that the wisdom that we derive from the word is, is able to help protect our soul and then protect and build even our physical man but tonight i want to discuss with you um something that i have titled the word of god does things Amongst us. See, the word of God does things amongst us. The word of God is like a ballistic missile. It is launched on a company. And it does things wherever it lands. The word of God is like a ballistic missile. It is launched on a company. And it does things at wherever it lands. Psalm 107 verse 20. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent out his word and it healed them and rescued them from the grave so he sends his word on a company to heal and to rescue he sends his word on a company it is more powerful than the ballistic missile he sends it on a company to heal and to rescue even from the grave colossians chapter 1 from verse 5 through 7 the faith and love that springs from the hope stored up for you in heaven and about which you have already heard in the true message of the gospel that has come to you so I've added a portion of the verses that has come to you the gospel that has come to you so I'm starting the verses from in. 
enti eni da soa e da ho ma mo osoro asempanoa asempanoa no kwasem a mate no enti asempanoa atomo se de e wo wiase nyina enso no in the same way the gospel is bearing fruits and growing throughout the world sara so na ere so aba akoso enyini ewumu in the same way sara so the gospel asempano the word of god onyame asem no is doing what bearing fruit ekoso aso aba it is growing na enyini throughout the world on a company bibian bonka ho just release it and it is bearing fruit and it is growing throughout the world and what i like is this just as it has been doing among you since the day you had it and truly understood god's grace just as it has been doing among you since the day you heard it and especially when you truly understood god's grace the word of god does things among us especially in those who understand the word Hebrews chapter 4. Yeah, okay, Hebrew 4 man, 89. Verse 12, very popular. Yeah, can kind if you in your do me no no. Then I'll add the verse 10. Because I'm saying that it's like a ballistic missile. I'll add the verse 13. But the word does things amongst us. Yeah. I want to encourage you to go to the word. Some show crying. Now fast them. These days we see Russia, Ukraine war, they are throwing ballistic missiles. But what we have is more than that. Hebrews 4 verse 12. For the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirits, joints and marrow, it judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Now, when you come and say, "One quart," now we are doing one more. Now, no one name is in Christ. Now, if you are a Christian, you say, "A papa, I am crying in my home. I quit. Any a chimu na a ya command susuye ni a juni temufo." It is sent on a company. Wherever it lands, it penetrates. Even to dividing the soul and the spirit. Now that is the soul and the spirit. So it works in the soul. It works in the spirit. Then the Bible talks about the joints and the marrows. So it works in the body. It judges thoughts. And the attitudes of people's hearts. It does things amongst us. Now verse 13. The big one. Nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered. And laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give account. Na eni abodi ebiara ene di ewo nenim na di ni na hunda ho na esu ebuye di yeni no wo asem no enim. Now you realize that we're talking about the word of God. Ni eka unyami asem hu asemo. Then soon the Bible says that nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Anche na ni unyami eka ni ebribi ni wo hinta ewo nenim. Now ballistic missiles is built on some laws. Wo shisha wo di shiye no mrakwa so. And its motion na bebi a eko biara is guided or determined. Esu wo chira no bebi a befa. By laws of exterior. And so it gets to the destination. Now, so when God sends his word, the Bible says that nothing 
in all creation is hidden from God's sight. So whatever the world should go, nothing will hide it. Nothing can be an obstruction. He sends it and it is guided by laws. Everything is laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Now we are talking about the word of God. Then soon we are talking about the eyes of God. So he's trying to say that when the word of God is sent, it goes with an eye. He knows where to land. And then when it lands in you, it knows what to do. It knows what to do. It is guided by laws. Isaiah 55. Let me start from 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. I said your slow crown sinning as I say no, Sarah and a maquine crown as sinning maquine, now my genin so as sinning my genin. So verse eight and nine introduces God. His thoughts and his ways are higher than ours. Now let's pay attention to verse 10. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bad and flourish so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, Na sadi e nsuo ni suchema free suru gufem na ensa nko bio jise afo asasi ansa amma ne duane na aso aba no na emma abama ugufuo ne duane emma odifuo no so is my word that goes out from my mouth so is my word it leaves my mouth and then the bible says that it does not return to me empty but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. Sarah na masema e free me num no beye. Erin sign mam in chain kwa. Nemum jese a ye de mepe. Once he says, let there be light. Ever since he said, let there be light. Ever since he called the day and the night, it has remained like that. When he told man be fruitful and multiply, that is a living word. It is still alive. Man be fruitful and multiply. That is a living word. It is still alive. Man be fruitful and multiply. That is a living word. It is still accomplishing whatever God desires. He does not speak idle words. He speaks on purpose. And as men and women of God, we must speak on purpose. Trust, trusting that our words will accomplish whatever we are sent out to do. See, as the rain and the snow cannot fail to nourish the earth, so God's word cannot fail to bring his people into the riches and the fullness of eternal life he has promised. So listen. God's word is just as irresistible and effective as the rain and the snow. All the armies of the world cannot withstand it. And it will accomplish the intended purpose. See, the word of God does not only describe a good future. It is God's appointed means 
to create the future. So I commit you to God and to the word of his grace which can build you up and then says give you inheritance. So it is predicting a good future. But the same way is God's appointed means to create that future. To create that future. See, when God was introducing Joshua into his greatness and into his future, this is what he said to him. Joshua 1 from verse 7 let's say 7 and 8 are we together be strong and very courageous be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you do not turn from it to the right or to the left that you may be successful Wherever you go, Unwara na enye ding na yen nampa na she di mra mashe makua mose nuni na so in free won konifa ana bengum na di ube kroni nina wedi. No, he wants this man to be prosperous. He wants him to be successful as a leader. Opese o yakenifu a odi ye pa. But he says that just follow the way. Asemo kache no ane se. It is God's means of granting that greatness. But a powerful one is in verse 8. Keep this book of the law. In our age, we would have said, Keep the word of God always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then, now, let's go to verse 8. I want it to be projected so that we'll interact with the scripture. Then, you will be prosperous and successful. And no, the King James says that then you will make your way prosperous. Then thou shalt have good success. Now what Then thou shalt have good success. Now what do ye? For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous. Then thou shalt have good success. And no, bema wakwain aye dojo. So that you make your way prosperous okay. by keeping the word of God on your lips, meditating on it day and night, and being careful to obey it. Who will make your way prosperous? It is your attitude towards the word. You yourself. Otherwise, everything is finished on the cross. Everything is finished on the cross. See, God was effectively telling Joshua to continually speak the word. Mm-hmm. You have to continually speak the word. Speak the word. Think the word. Act upon the way. And this will create a great future for you. Because inherent in the way is the life transforming power of God. Speak the word. Think the word. Act upon the way. Because inherent in his word is God's power of transformation. Are we together? Mark chapter 12. Verse 24. Jesus replied. Are you not in error because you do not know the scriptures or the power of God? Now, Jesus, he once said, "Enyenimu amunimu chresem 
and you and Yanko Pang wording empty and a move for me. Now, what is he saying? Dear no, okay. You don't know the scriptures. Okay. Then he says, Oh, the power of God. And now when you coupon to me. Because the scriptures is the power of God. So inherent in his word is God's power. For making great. For changing situations. For healing and bringing transformation. May the Lord help us. To have a positive attitude towards his word. What then should be our attitude towards the word of God? Okay. Just from what he told Joshua. I want to suggest that we must learn to speak the word. See, Jesus said, I don't have any word. Except what I hear him speak. That is what I say. I just don't speak because of the way I feel. Or the way I think. Speak the word. Because God will only act upon his word. I'm not saying positive confession. God does not work on positive confession. He acts upon his word. Mm-hmm. Not because uh, tomorrow I'll buy a car. Positive confession. Ah, yes, I was sorry. I But you see, he acts upon his okay. way. Let us go to Revelation 19, verse 15. I'm not saying that tomorrow you will not buy a car. But there's different between speaking the word and just confessing positively. You see, there is no word that has life and more positive than his word. There's no word out there. Revelation 19 15. Coming out of his mouth. Is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. Let me read my version. This one is, says, Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword. But so we have just read from Hebrews that the word of God is a double edged sword. So coming out of his mouth it's a sharp sword with the weak to strike down the nations so let's take the king james coming out of his mouth goes a sharp sword so all of them are using sharp sword that with it he should smite the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treaded the widespread of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Now, Fnana Nambi Frina Numa or the Bebobo Amanamang, now or the Dadia Puma Ben Yen won, now or no, now Utietia Unyankopong, a Dinina Sutum Fono, a Bufwa, a ye ding no. So there's a sharp sword coming out of his mouth. And it works. Now listen. When the word of God is in your heart, it is for defense. But when it is in your mouth, it is for attack. Let the word be in your mouth. Let it be in your mouth. Speak it out. Speak it out. And you'll be releasing a double exhaust. It will be cutting. And destroying. Speak it. So speak the word. Then think the word. Meditate upon it day and night. See, you'll be like someone 
we plant like the tree planted by the streams of water. Then when you act upon it, there is rich reward. James 1.21 James 1.21 Therefore, get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent and humbly accept the word planted in you which can save you anunti munyi efi ani boni muno so nyina ntontwene na monfa odjo nyi asemo a watanu mumu no a ebetumi age mu kra james is saying that the word can save you and yakobo say Paul says that it can build you up and give you inheritance. Let's read from New Living Translation. James 1 21. So get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word of God. The word God has planted in your heart, for it has the power to save your soul. Enti muni efi eni boni muro soni na tonche ne na mufa ojuo eni asemwa watenu mumua ebetu mi ajemo kra. It has the power to save your soul. Ebetu mi ebetu mi ajemo kra. See, therefore get rid of all moral filth and the evil that is so prevalent, and humbly accept. The word planted in you, which can save your soul. Enti muni efi ne boni muro swani na antonche ne na mumfa ojuo eni asemwa watenu mumu noa ebetu mi aji mokra. The NIV says, "Which can save you." Chero sem ne se asemi ebetu mi aji mokra. You body, soul, spirit. James is virtually pleading with the brethren to let go all moral filth. And accept the word of God planted in them. Which can save them. If he could, he would have forced them to obey it. But he can't do that. Because it all premises on the will of the of, of, of the one who is hearing. Or receiving the word. How do you accept the word planted in you? How do you do that? So when we say to accept, we want to say that to take or receive something that is offered. So he says that get rid of all filth and accept the word of God. This is an offer and it's a good offer. Please accept it It is a good offer. It is a word of God. It will build you up and give you inheritance. So when you hear the word come to you, accept it take it receive it it is a good offer when we say to accept we also mean to agree to consent to or to accede to so when the word of God is coming to you you only have to agree that it go be so consent see to it that it is true it will work when we say accept we mean to respond or answer affirmatively answer affirmatively answer affirmatively respond positively to it when we say to accept we mean to undertake the responsibility duties honest of an offer or a position so when the word of God comes to you Undertake the responsibility associated 
with it, the conditions. Take that responsibility. Do it. And life will come to you. Modians will be who are some new session. Now, fun is a study. Now, for your Juma, the being Shira Ediama. Now, living in obedience to the word of God. So, we are Suti Amonia Mia Seven. So, verse 21 says that the way that has been planted in you is life. It can save you. Then, a couple kind of Sama Watan Womumuno, a young qua, a bit to me. Now, from verse 22, he tells us how we'll be able to make good use of this offer. That has come to us. Oh, to us, no, no, what train and quiet bit me a fasso at the sir at the power de my yea, a yeduma. Twenty two. And you move at you, no, me. Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourself. Do what he says. Ain't it munya a semno tear for keke and fa and sisimo munya ni a semno can. Do what he says. Munya ni a semno can. We have been listening enough. Okay, what ye a check. Do what he says. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what he says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forget what he looks like. <laughs> Na se obiye asem no tie fo na onye oyefo a oti so nipa a ohwe ne nim suban atwehwe mu na hwe ofri ho kwa na ni wure fi se de na mesu etie but whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom this word gives freedom be asemi e de fa hudie e ba na de okoto hwe adishidie emra e di mu no mu no and continues in it na otine mu no not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it. Na onye otie fo yure free fo ne mum odiye e jumano. He looks intently. Oni no okutu shumi. Into the perfect law. Oshere adisidi emre numu. He looks intently. Oshere adisidi emre numu. Into the word of God that gives freedom. Oshere onyamia semwa. Intently. Oshere mu yepa. He looks intently. Okutu shemu. Into the word that gives freedom. Asemwa edi ojiya banu. And continues in it. Na oshere se obeye. Continues in it. Na otwaso eshemu. Continues searching. Na otwaso shishemu. In it. Not forgetting what he has heard. Na ni yule mfi ni awaten. But doing it. Na mum oye asemli ye phone. But acting upon it. Na odi asemli ye jumano. They will be blessed. No asemli se. We be share. In what they do. When ya obey ye biaremu. Full stop. Ewe. Continue in it. O koso ewa asemli. Intently. Pri biara. Intently. O koso. He is not forgetting what he has heard. Ni yule mfi ni awaten. But he is doing it. Na odi ye juma. The Bible said they will be blessed. Just say, we'll be strong. In what they do. Yeah, we'll be a bear. Psalm 19, verse 11. Yeah, yeah, and you just to remind you again. The Bible says that by them your servant is warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. Then pay attention to this verse. Anytime that um, I don't have a closing address. I'll read this verse. So this is almost always my closing address. For small meetings. When I don't have an official closing address. Shall I call her the test? Eh? You are waiting for it. Why eh? can't you say some of you, I'm sure you're also going to adopt it as your closing address. John chapter 13, verse 17. Okay, you honey. Asemu no edia. John chapter 13, verse 17. Now that you know these things, you know that you will be blessed if you do them. things, you will be blessed if you do them. Now that you know these things, you will Now that you know these things, you will be blessed. You will be blessed. And the Bible say, if it's premise on your will, you do them. If you know this word and you do it, you'll be blessed. This was said by Jesus. We? It was his closing address. <laughs> and it has been my closing address. And let it be your closing address. Now that you know these things, after a great conference, 
speakers have spoken, having heard and known, you only be blessed if you do them. But you see, brothers, we have said that acting upon the word of God is always made easier when there is the understanding of it. All that has to be done has been done. All that he needs to do, he has accomplished it on the cross. And all our benefits are written down in the scriptures. It is ours to discover it. That is the knowledge that comes through understanding. This to me is our greatest need as Christians. I think the Apostle Paul will agree with me. That is why he prays for his congregation. For this reason, ever since I heard about your faith in the Lord, and your love for all God's people. I have not stopped giving thanks for you. Remembering you in my prayers. I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. The glorious father. May give you the spirit of wisdom. And revelation. So that you know him better. Now he's not saying the gift of the word of wisdom. He's not talking about revelation. But he says that may give you the spirit. And the S there is capital S. So that the wisdom that the spirit gives. And the wisdom and revelation that comes by the spirit. He is saying that the spirit of God grants certain wisdom and revelation that brings that kind of understanding that we need from scripture. So this is not the gift of the word of wisdom. This is the spirit of wisdom. And revelation. So anytime that you sit behind the word, pray that God grant me the spirit of wisdom and revelation so I will know you better see no one is able to interpret God except the spirit of God so the Holy Spirit will interpret him better to you so that you may know him better I pray that the eyes of your heart be enlightened in order that you may know the hope for which he has called you the riches of his glorious inheritance in the holy people and incomparably great power that is available for us who believe so let's keep praying for the spirit of wisdom and revelation. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. Not the gift of wisdom and the gift of word of knowledge. No. But this one will help us to know him better. Colossians 1 verse 9. Colossians 1 9. For this reason, this is another prayer from the great Paul. Since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives. So there is a 
the understanding and the wisdom that the spirit does what gives now he gives this for us to know him better and when the understanding comes and you know the way and you speak the way and you think the way and you act upon the way you will be blessed body soul spirit you will be blessed for me Understanding of the scriptures is our greatest need as believers. So we may not be tossed to and fro by any wind of doctrine. Now we need to be conversant with the word of God. By reading it. Hmm studying it meditating upon it memorizing it i went to where was i is it praso or asinfosu one of the places then i was talking about the samaritan woman and jesus's encounter then i said we see who can narrate the story. And I maybe say, why? And I say, come on, yes, you know, my minute, you know, but to me, I can't on church room. Just narrate the story. I wanted somebody just to tell me what happened. Why in the bit to me, I can't do you see a pa at the actual center? No sooner had I finished asking this question than a woman's hand went up. Manu and see, and I'm a maybe man and sasso. Then I asked her to come. I'm a can't say, yo, Omra. And then she recited the whole of chapter four <laughs> of John. Yohane, as in Pano eighteen nine, in the village, we have with him. Oh, can you not fear such a thing? I was surprised. Sure, we're going to say, now grow. The hand went up like that. Yes, sir. On my son, Tampa. Then she recited. Now, Baba can said the watcher watcher only mu pepe pepe. Yohane, as in Pano eighteen nine. Brothers and sisters. I don't know. We are sitting on gold. Yet we say we need money. Let's mine it. Let's mine the gold. Let's mine the gold. Let's mine the gold. Mine the gold. Reciting it. We need to share it. We need to proclaim it. We need to confess it. We need to confess it. And above all, we need to act upon it. As James advises. And thou shalt make thy way prosperous. And then thou shalt have good success. May the Lord bless us. As we all go intently to look into our face in the mirror of the word. That brings liberty. As we pray for God to give us the spirit of wisdom and understanding. To know, to know him better. When he reveals him to us. Let us accept the word by acting upon him. And we will never be the same again. What power. Is it in the word that he has given us? May the Lord bless us tonight. May he cause his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. There is nothing as better and as a great gift apart from Jesus and the Holy Spirit that God has made available for us. And in us. God bless you. Now, wherever you are, you want to give your life to Jesus. I invite you to come to him by praying this simple prayer after me. If you pray it in faith, you will be born again. If you are ready to repent of your sins, pray this prayer after me. Dear Lord, I repent of my sins. And I accept Jesus as my Savior. 
Amen. Amen. You have prayed this simple prayer. You are born again. Join us in worship. Or join any good Bible believing church. And your life will never be the same again. Today the word is planted in your heart. It is like a ballistic missile. It does things among us. If you allow it, it will change you. And you will change the society. God bless you.